Good evening and welcome to Smart Entrepreneurship Decoded on Transcontinental Times. Time has really flown by. It's nearly 35 weeks since we started and we have seen 34 previous guests speak to us about a variety of topics related to entrepreneurship, investments, incubating, incubation, acceleration, both from India and overseas. One area that always uh, tends to fascinate me and is also the focus of a lot of the government's attention across the world is the SME sector. Nothing frustrates or astonishes an SME business owner more than the fact that when he sees similar companies in the startup world as his getting funded enormous amounts of money, they wonder why they have been running these companies for so many years often profitably, whereas a similar company comes up in the startup sphere and attracts this huge amount of funding. A lot of SME owners have expressed their frustration to me that uh, they find this new economy and the startup business a bit of a letdown because they feel kind of, uh, you know, left behind in this whole thing. So I thought, why not bring somebody who understands this sector well our guest tonight is a multifaceted personality, not just on the SME front, but is a leading consultant for companies from across the world. I would like you to welcome Mr. Manoj Tandon of Talitso. He's the managing director of this company based out of Gurgaon with offices in various parts of the world. Welcome, Manoj. Very nice to have you tonight. Same here, Nalin. Pleasure to be I here. Was, you know, I was reading about your journey and... Uh, SME is not a very uh, an area which has got a lot of sex appeal, right? A lot of people like to work with the big six, etc. I know you work with other companies as well, but you a lot of the work that you do is with SMEs uh, uh, in India and uh, all over. But before we get into that, <clears throat> you yourself have the uh, the badge of the twin eyes from India, right? The IIT and the IIM thing. <laughs> so why why then not a high flying corporate career or a startup kind of thing? At why did you venture out into consulting on your own? So actually, uh, uh, Nalin, you said it in a very uh, interesting way that yes, I did went to IIT and then I went to IIM, and actually I did join the uh, corporate world. I was I started in the IT industry, and. Uh, uh, as it happens, uh, uh, IT industry at that time was a very small industry. You know, we hardly had 2,000 people all over the country employed in only two companies, TCS and one more. Uh, and uh, the way it happens, I went, to, I used to go overseas to do a lot of work. And then finally, I decided to switch. Uh, and uh, Fujitsu wanted me to start their Dallas operations. Uh, so they sent me there and then I joined a consulting company in California where I became a managing partner. It was a small company which grew to a fairly large one billion dollar company. Uh, and uh, then I was joined, I came back, joined a company called Computer Sciences Corporation and I was their divisional president. And again, uh, I was the first Indian to be a board, part of their European board. Now, what happens is that in this journey of a corporate world, I had done many firsts in the sense of, you can call it entrepreneurship of, the, of some kind, uh, opening a new operation in US, uh, uh, joining IT industry when it was very small. We were all learning the ropes under some very big stalwarts who I uh, had the fortune to be mentored by. Uh, CSC also, I was the first Indian in their European board, so I had to understand the whole dynamics from the beginning and to the thing. So in 2013, finally, when I had been there, done that, I kind of thought that I have uh, some good years of working life left in me. Now I have a choice. I can continue and uh, do the same thing, you know, over and over again, or I could try something very different. A kind of an entrepreneurial mentality, but not exactly that entrepreneurial thing in that sense. So I spoke to various people and uh, all of them told me one thing. I said, I said, tell me something where I can actually do something new, give back to the business world, which, some, which uh, uh, has given me so much. 
so i everybody told me one thing that you know the sme sector and the startups they need people like you but unfortunately they can't either afford you or people are not interested like your kind of people are not interested and if they need that guidance and they get to try to go to a bigger consulting company it's not affordable i mean they are small they are startups true true so i decided to coin this term called affordable consulting a kind of a thing where i don't charge them too much money but i guide them and i mentor them and help so it's been now around 8 uh, 8 eight, eight years that i have been in this line so and uh, it's been a great journey you know both from uh, so before we move into the sme side of it i'm mm-hmm. always curious when i meet people who have passed out from the iits uh, iims a little earlier a few generations earlier mm-hmm. you must be coming across the graduates of today right from the same institutes yes and uh, so f- from that time to now i'm i'm not my question is not on the qualitative side of education and all that what i sure. want to know is when you see these young people what is the difference between the way they approach things and the way uh, you know our generation approached uh, the industry or life in general what is, what are the few things that is different about the young people coming out today sure uh, some things are very positive for example uh, they are more aware about uh, what happened what's happening in the world we didn't have that kind of a world view a uh, part of it is because of internet and globalization part of it is because the mind the thinking of any uh, of of youngsters have uh, have evolved and changed second is that uh, they are more willing to take risks uh, in our case it was like you do iit i am and you go to corporate you know uh, the entrepreneurship as a as a uh, as a as a this thing was not very strong uh in my batch if you look at it the hardcore entrepreneurs are very very limited in number so sure. but today's generation is more uh, driven more dynamic uh, they want to take chances a part of the reason also is that if they don't succeed there's always the corporate world to fall back upon but the fact that they have it in them to do something is is very very amazing and uh, very endearing i mean i really like uh, do you the the do you also find that the the sheer confidence of the this generation is a, a lot different from we were little hesitant uh, we were we are being respectful but we were hesitant but today's Absolutely. generation yes this generation is uh, very good in that respect if they the only thing they need is channelization of their energy and their dynamism uh given them the direction otherwise i i i would venture out to hesitate to say that they are you, in many ways much superior than us i i couldn't agree more but you made an important point when you said channelize the energies do you think because of the multitude of opportunities they had see for better or worse uh, for us it was a black and white world yeah. you do this then you do this and your life is set or whatever that is what we were yes. pushed But yes. because of the multitude of opportunities that are there, is there a do you see a possibility where more of them get a little confused as to what to do? Yeah, there are two kinds of possible uh, the uh, issues that actually have come up because of these opportunities. One is that they are more confused uh, because uh, ultimately there's a peer pressure, there's a pressure of outside world. Hey, that person is doing this. He has put his bought a Mercedes, and what about you? You know that kind of pressure. uh the 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 second one also is that uh, somewhere in this uh, this this multitude of opportunities uh they are not able to judge very well as to what suits them uh and what is something which they can do uh, which kind of you know not everybody can be everything uh, so knowing yourself and then using it that to actually find out what is best for you is, is also an important part which is uh, not so this thing let's uh, uh, get to the topic we started with the sme sector sure. and let's just let's focus on india for a moment yeah. why is it such a bad ba- almost a badge of dishonor to be an sme uh, it's like a, being a poor cousin to the industry right the industry needs them without a doubt uh, yes but why why have we in such a stage where 
it is almost a badge of dishonor that you know so many of them just want to shut and try something new uh shut as in uh, uh you know what, try uh, something in the startup world or the, the, you know the, the, the make money some other way but uh, running yeah. an industry in the sme sector seems to be such a hard task uh, i saw my father in law do it for 30 40 years and give up but it just right, seems right. such an uphill task what is it that is that will you know help or uncork this huge potential that is there of yeah. uh, an asset based the country is already invested in right so actually uh, the reason is that uh, there are multiple reasons and of course uh, i'll cover a few and i'm sure there are many more uh, which obviously uh, can be the talked about so uh, for example uh, when i meet people and when i meet youngsters who have kind of dreams in their eyes and they want to do things uh, there there's a lot of uh, lack of uh, clarity in terms of why is it that they want to uh, you know uh, why do why do they want to start go on their own so it seems to be quite often things like you know my friend is doing it my relative is doing it and he's very successful successful in courts uh, nobody is clear about uh, you know uh, what successful means etc so there is this uh, there is this desire to actually do um, do you know i also want to be in it the me too world as they call it right uh, so this industry has become full of what you could call as the me too startups uh, there is no new thought no new idea it's just that somebody else is doing it so i want to do it kind of stuff and that causes a lot of failures and the number of failures that are happening almost 90 95% actually makes it a very risky path to go into and uh, therefore i mean to answer your question in a way when you say why is it you're basically saying why is it that it's kind of looked down upon right uh, am i right nalin have i understood that part correctly yeah because the today being in the sme sector startup has got some uh, sex appeal a lot of investors looking at it media writing about it but then you have these 6 and a half crore smes that are lying on the side 80 90% they themselves their ind- their industry association says they are sick or dead or non revivable so we have an asset base here already invested that has contributed to the economy what is it that can be done to unlock the smes to their potential because there's a lot of focus on the startups but nobody talks about what is already there mm-hmm. okay okay i i now i've understood i've understood the question that you're asking yeah so 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 that is so one of the reasons i like i just mentioned why you have so many of them just lying there and uh, really not giving any returns uh, is that that people have not really thought through why they want to do the startup what is it that they are looking at and uh, therefore you know what uh, uh, you know so the, the, the startup is kind of it's a still born business uh, designed uh, which will definitely which is not going to make it so that's one the second i also mentioned about is that uh, the it's the quality of uh, people that matters a lot uh, the founding team uh, how how good is the founding team and how good are they so that uh, they are able to uh, you know it's not just enough that you have a business degree or an engineering degree for you to be able to people have to be innovative people have to be hard working people have to have that uh, feet on the ground as I, as i always say that you need to have feet on the ground and head in the cloud uh, you have to envision things which are beyond what is there already but at the same time have your feet on the ground and that doesn't really happen very often so uh, that's the other problem the third problem is that uh, in countries like india uh, and uh, I, what i have what i have seen uh, is that the understanding of the customer is is generally very weak uh, we are a very diverse country 
and uh, the customer behavior the customer requirement the customer needs they keep changing uh, as the geography keeps changing uh, most of the youngsters most of the people they don't have a in depth understanding of the market and therefore they are not able to uh, they they start the business they are they are they initially they cater, cater it to a good listing and then after that they they don't know how to expand because the market that they are playing in they don't haven't understood it correctly so there are many such reasons one of them being the financial as well of course uh, and getting great qualified people initially when you are small you are just the partners who are working things out and then gradually you, when you expand you need people and then you get don't get qualified and good people who are willing to take risk and work with you it's interesting you know the, uh, that quote of yours was uh, very well said interestingly when i was looking through your uh, the things that you've done and achieved in your life one of your hobbies stood out very starkly uh, to me which is that you study war theory and war war wars over the last uh, 40 45 years can you just w- walk me through that how does somebody get interested in that because i you want you didn't you were not in the armed forces or how did it start exciting you and uh, is there any application of that in the real world in the business world yes uh, actually what happened was yeah, uh, it's a it's a long story i'll tell you in, in a minute uh, in a short way uh one day i in my school we had a very good library i went there i couldn't find any book to read so i by chance picked up a few readers digest manuals on war uh, world war 2 they had come up with some new books and i just got i just borrowed them and when i started reading them i just got glued to them and uh, something happened and i just finished all those volumes in in a week's time when i returned to the librarian she looked at me with a smile on my face on her face and how the hell could you finish all this in two in a week and uh, that led to my interest and my this thing and i had a professor who actually taught us history and that was not a very interesting subject for me but then he taught us the battle plan between akbar and ibrahim lo uh, sorry babar and ibrahim lo these fight uh with a using a good full chart and this was in 8th grade by the way and i and, and the both these events just got me hooked upon hooked down to it uh, and i started reading a lot about it i uh, of course my family didn't let me try my hand at joining the army but the love for the war continued and i have read the volumes of uh, this uh the famous chinese uh, philosopher and so on so forth and i've been reading and writing and doing some small work here and there with the army chapies uh, for uh, last uh, 30 40 years uh, and yes there is a lot of uh, similarity between sometimes in a war planning and starting and executing a war as well as the sme business and i'll tell you what that is uh, whenever you have a war the first thing is uh, you have to understand your enemy very well and not underestimate it in this case replace the enemy part and that's not a good replacement but by customers and competitors so you have to understand the customer very well especially in the geography and in the segment you are going to operate in at the same time you also have to understand your competition extremely well once you know that you have to look within yourself as to what is your capability to fight okay uh if you try to fight with a with a with a with a uh, ola or uber today you don't stand a chance so you don't fight to lose you fight to win so you find a segment you find an area maybe in the already existing mature market or somewhere big players are there where you have a chance which is a gap so wars utilize these gaps armies utilize these gaps very beautifully and to fight a war you need a battle plan which is similar to a maybe a business plan or a marketing plan or a sales plan or operations plan and very importantly a financial plan uh, as to how you will go about because you have limited resources you have limited money you have limited number of people and you have less time as well because these days uh, everything goes uh, at a at a breakneck speed so 
you got to find out how will you enter the market where will you enter who are your target customers where will you attack first where will you find a foothold and then use that foothold to go deeper into the market and so on so forth very similar to what happens in a warfare uh and 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 then eventually how do you grow so once you have entered you have made a beach head you have made your foothold how do you grow and doing all that given the fact that you have only certain number of soldiers and certain number of equipment to fight with in other words you have certain amount of money only with which you have to make all this uh, to do all this investor is like the government which funds the military uh if you have if you are if you have a reasonable plausible plan hopefully the ministry will give you the money to 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 acquire more things similarly if you have good investor if you have an investor uh, who has the money and who would like to invest in the area in which you are operating you will be able to uh, get the funding for that so there's a lot of similarity between the two so you touched upon another pet peeve of mine uh, a lot of young startup founders uh, tend to believe that there is no need of a plan because everything changes all the time i don't need a plan i'll figure it out as it goes what's your take on that no uh, yes the plan needs to be changed and yes as the thing goes plans are not cast in stone but you need a plan because plan is like a lighthouse for a ship in a sea you need to know the general direction if you just go somewhere you will reach somewhere but if you go in the direction of the lighthouse you will reach the right place in between there will be waves which will throw you away in the wrong directions there will be storms which will maybe change the direction of your ship but you need that lighthouse so there is definitely a need for a plan and yes it will need changes as you go along but that's what the dynamism of business is uh there is why do you need a plan why do you need a plan in the business context because you have to know how much you are not operating with unlimited resources you are not operating in a unlimited market you are not global you are operating in a limited market in a limited segment you have limited resources and you alone cannot succeed if you alone were there i would say don't have a plan go ahead you because it's only you but there are many other people uh, also involved so you need to have that direction and by the way if you need to want to raise funds no investor will pay you any money if you don't have a clear cut plan and a clear cut direction in which you are going to go i'm so glad you said that because uh... I I I also face a lot of entrepreneurs and whenever I hear this about the plan I cringe because I tell them the same thing uh, which you put so eloquently that a plan will change the moment you start implementing it it becomes useless it keeps changing Definitely. it's okay but it is important to show how you're thinking how did you think about this how did you approach it what were the assumptions what were the risks you mitigated and what it is just just i want to understand your thought process the plan Absolutely. itself is huge but plan will be useless once you start implementing that part is okay yeah. Yeah. so i'm glad you said that one last question because you know the, speaking to you uh, as a, a voice of sanity and wisdom uh, i lost track of time but it, a last question you see a lot of these young people trying to approach entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship is not easy it has been romanticized now and the media has raved about it but it still doesn't make it easier just no, because not. it is uh, hyped so much no. what are the few things you would advise entrepreneurs to be ready for how do they prepare for this journey what should they do regardless of the age group they are from uh, midlife yeah. entrepreneurs have their own challenges let's not get into yes. that but yeah. for young people what should they prepare themselves with yeah so first is uh, uh, i'll i'll just give a few points which uh, i thought i in fact that was a message i had prepared for the in the entrepreneurship uh, one is uh, do be an entrepreneur by all means but don't do it because others are doing it the fire has to come within if you don't have that fire there is no harm in being a in a job it's not 
it doesn't make you any smaller it doesn't make you any less smarter uh, some people are not meant for that so do it only if there's a in, internal fire in you that's one second is that make sure that your business model is strong whether big or small any company needs a solid business model which means you make a thing for 80 rupees you sell for 100 rupees and you make money that's the basics of it of course i i can't go into details uh, of it but uh, basically have a good strong business model make sure that what you are selling is actually solving a long term problem of your clients and the market don't do things uh, which you think could help you know uh, don't imagine things have it grounded in reality that there is a problem there is a need and i'm fulfilling that uh, many people made this mistake of because these are so many people so much technology is kind of getting into the into things that just by automating and just by creating a technology startup things will succeed well if there is garbage going on you will have automated garbage it's not going to help in any way so <laughs> the first comes the solution then it is enabled by a technology which is great these days but it doesn't happen that you first use the technology and then state a business model to it go reverse find the business model thing a problem and then fit use technology to solve that problem very very well said so, i especially uh, like the first part right that first decide why are you doing this yeah if you look at the world entrepreneur it comes from the sanskrit mm -hmm. words of antar prerna if there is yes. no antar prerna what is the point of being entrepreneur absolutely and why use technology sometimes you you you've put it so aptly sometimes you find these people using such complex technology to solve a simple problem yes. why not use the complex technology to solve a complex problem why absolutely. why complicate simple things absolutely. so uh, and a lot of the jargon you hear etc you start thinking whether they are using technology just for attracting investors or what it, it, it is uh, it is quite often beginning to look like that and one last one one, one more important thing sure, that, uh, yeah is that uh, if you think that you are going to uh, you are doing entrepreneurship because someday you want to have a palatial house and in southern france and uh, and mercedes just because of that don't do it because nobody has succeeded because they wanted to make money and that's why they became entrepreneur solve a problem there if you can talk about solving a problem solve doing it in excellence money will flow money is the by product not the reason why you do business or you become an entrepreneur and be willing to work for 16 hours a day be willing that your first few years you will have nothing you will not be eating uh, the at the fancy restaurants you will just be working 7 days a week 16 hours a day and that is and you will but you will keep that fire burning inside you to solve that problem whichever whatever it takes i think you put it beautifully and especially i will end with that last sentence and i'll just reword it a little bit if you follow your passion fame and money will come as a by product but if you f follow money and fame you'll never find your passion so Absolutely. with that manoj i want to thank you for your very very sane and practical advice today thank you have a great evening talk to you again soon thank you it's been a pleasure for me thank you manoj